But tragically, George Floyd's name joins an ever-growing list of black men whose killings were supposed to usher in a new era of racial equality in America especially. Eight years ago, that name was Trayvon Martin, a 17-year-old from Florida shot as he walked home and whose death became a focal point for anti-racism campaigners across the United States. Trayvon's mother, Sabrina Fulton, joins us live now from Miami. Welcome to you. It's hard to believe that it's already eight years since Trayvon's killing. How are you? I'm, I'm doing well. I can actually say I'm, I'm really doing well. I've been staying home because of the coronavirus, but um, I'm doing fairly well. How did you feel when you, you saw those images that have been played out across our screens of George Floyd being killed? Um, it's heartbreaking. It, it's disgusting to know that we're still being treated um, like animals, like we're three-fifths human. And it, 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 it was awful. It was awful to hear George um, seeing what happened to him, um, such disrespect, and to know that he was calling out for his mom, who was already in heaven. Uh, and what sort of memories did it bring back for you? Um, it, it brought memories back of my son and the tragic, you know, death that he, he had. And, and just to know that so many people are supporting George Floyd and, you know, I stand with him as well. I stand with his family as well, um, just so I can do my part to, you know, just make sure that my voice is heard. Um, I definitely feel like change is going to come. That was one of the things that I heard in the clip that you just played. Most definitely change is going to come, but we have to keep the pressure on and we to make sure that we have uh, laws in place and make sure that we make the necessary changes so people don't continue to treat us a certain way. Uh, and talking about keeping that, that pressure on, a year after Trayvon was killed, the Black Lives Matter movement was set up and you've started the Trayvon Martin Foundation. Uh, do you think that group action may, makes a, a difference? I absolutely do. I absolutely think that united we stand. I absolutely think that you know, the voice of so many different people from all walks of life. It doesn't matter if you're poor, middle class, or rich, if you're educated or uneducated. It doesn't matter if you're Christian, Baptist, Muslim, uh, a Jewish. It doesn't matter those things. It doesn't matter if you're straight or gay. Those things are not um, um, are, are important. What's important is that these are human beings, that we all are human beings, and we should treat each other accordingly. We should treat each other and respect each other, no matter what your religion is, no matter what the color of your skin is. As we know, the, the debate around criminal justice continues uh, uh, today. We've had Donald Trump, the president of the United States, signing an executive order restricting police use of, of chokeholds. Do you welcome that? Has that gone far enough for you? Um. I, I, it was one part in there that he said that um, had me concerned. It said unless it was uh, necessary or they feared for their life. Um, if, 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 you know, we have had people being shot in the back, and I, I don't understand, you know, some of the things, uh, some of the language that uh, law enforcement uses and, you know, some of the language that even the president used today, you know, um, it, it could be questionable. But I just think, that people need to stop killing us for no reason. If, if whatever George Floyd did, he should have been arrested for it and not, it, it should not have cost him his life. You attended the, the funeral of uh, George Floyd. Obviously, you witnessed the, the grief, uh, the loss uh, and, and the anger. Um, do you think that his killing is a tipping point? Is something different this time? The difference I see now is a lot of young people are involved, and that's a plus. A lot of people from all walks of life are involved, and it was recorded on video. So the narrative would have been a little differently had we not had a video. We would have heard that, that George Floyd uh, resisted arrest or that he was belligerent or something like that, and, and the officer feared for his life. But that's not what we saw. Because of the video, we were able to see that he was handcuffed, he was on the ground, his face was pressing the ground, he was calling out that he couldn't breathe, he was calling out for his mother while he was be re being restrained by three officers, and the fourth officer was standing there. And so all people, all parties involved need to be held accountable, regardless. Whenever there's a loss of life, they need to be held accountable.
Sabrina Fulton, thank you very much for speaking to us this evening.